what's going on YouTube all right we got a little project today we are going to go ahead and start building the step uh, for the Super A so I kind of did like a rough sketch on what I think I'm gonna go ahead and build um, I may deviate from this as I'm building it but I'm basically just gonna do a little angled step this could be square uh, tubing that we're gonna recycle from an old back rack uh, from a truck and then obviously make the bracket drill the hole bolt this in to the bottom of the front side of the final drive and then um, I'm probably going to put a piece of expanded metal on the top and leave this open in the middle so that way any dirt were in your feet not that this tractor is going to get dirt you know over your feet and get it on there but that way it's easier to wash and get through there if you want to spray the tractor off the reason I started the video off with showing the muffler um, and the tape on here was for something very funny that I've been seeing a lot lately yes bourbon beer tractors are prepping it's not my video unless there's at least a beer or a bourbon or something in here so cheers um so the point on me showing this was i had to get a chuckle out of how many times i've seen people with videos or comments on facebook or youtube showing their exhaust pipe on their tractor <laughs> instead of being straight up bent over this way and they're like um, I didn't check the garage door clearance before I pulled out. So, I've done this on all my garages. I've done it on my trailer. Um, that's kind of a very important thing to do that should almost be like numero uno when you either pull your tractor in or pull it out. Check your garage door height. See how high your door goes. Because it's really not that hard to pull a tape measure from the ground to the door and find out what your height is and then measure your tractor. It's going to save your tractor, it's going to save your exhaust, it's going to save your door if you end up... Most likely the exhaust is going to give before you really destroy the door. But do you really want to destroy your new muffler or crack your you know, manifold or have a nice fancy new paint job and then have your muffler fall in there and put a big gouge in it because you didn't check your garage door height? It's very simple. Even on, <coughs> excuse me, even on my stainless muffler, I wanted to cut a little bit more off because in this garage, the door was just a hair bit lower than it was on the shed. So the shed, this thing cleared just fine. Here, it didn't. I knew that, and I had a feeling of that. So when I first brought the tractor in here, I backed it up real easy, stopped, measured, and I realized, yeah, it's not gonna fit. Before I just came zooming through the door and then watched my muffler go. So it's a very simple thing. If you don't wanna mess it up, throw some blue tape on there. You don't need much to trim, just use a hacksaw. Um, you can make a nice straight cut. I cut this much off before because I needed enough to clear and I gave it just a hair bit more in case, you know, you hit a bump or something like that and it shoves it up, doesn't shove it in the door. But for this door, I need to take off this much more. So I went ahead and taped it up, sawed it off. Very simple, very quick, doesn't take a lot of time and it'll save your tractor. So that's just my tip for the day. But as you see, I made plenty of room and the baby's all covered up so it doesn't get all dirty and dusty actually it's to keep you over spray from the Cerakote booth um, getting all over it but I am uh, this winter I'm ordering all new rims for the tractor front and rear I just I don't know I, I want to keep the old rims on here but I just can't seem to bring myself past keeping this one that was pitted up and since I Cerakoted it I really couldn't body fill it and it drives me crazy looking at this wheel so I'm ordering new rims for it now I may actually send the new rims to a chrome plater and I actually may have these rims chrome plated. I don't know. I'm tossing it around. It's a little expensive, but I think it might look really cool on this tractor. I don't know. I'll decide once I get them. I may spray them back silver again. I may go ahead and have them chromed. Not sure, but regardless, I'm putting all new rims on. This rim here has a slight wobble to it. Not much. Not much. It really does anything, any damage. You don't feel it in the wheel, but you just see it a little bit. And of course, that's the one thing somebody had to call out on one of the videos that I had was the, your wheel's bent. I know it's a little bent, it's just, but it's nothing that's like, you know, treacherous and makes the tractor jump all over the road and it's, you know, death-defying riding down the road. It's no big deal. Um, this rim was good, so there's nothing wrong with it. So obviously I'm going to, you know, keep the rims. You know, they hold air, they work and everything else, but I just don't want to use them on this one. So this rim wasn't as bad. Just got a couple little pits in it here and there, but nothing major. So anyway... So today's video, we are going to take this old rack right here, 
that I salvaged. I used the screen out of it one time, they expanded metal for something else. Um, and I saved the metal in case I needed it. And it's gonna be absolutely perfect for the step. So we're gonna go ahead and saw that off in pieces and then I'm gonna go ahead and make it so ugh. it's gonna mount in here. And I'm gonna put the nut on here and bolt it to here. The arm's gonna come off and I might go ahead and oh, let me show you what I'm doing here. It's gonna come off this way and come to a very slight turn right here in front of the tire, just enough to get your foot up on there and climb up without having to grab and I'll always yank that steering wheel. So besides the step, my other future thing I'm gonna do um, soon, the pedal cover, I'm gonna order a new one because again, I can't seem to get past the dents and it bothers me. Everything came out too nice on the tractor. So that's gonna get replaced. And then I think I'm gonna go ahead and replace the headlights um, because the H needs some lights. And if I'm gonna buy brand new lights, the brand new ones are gonna go on this tractor. And then these are gonna go on to the H. Nothing wrong with them, they work good. Original guy glass, everything's perfect on them. But the couple little itty bitty imperfections that's in here, I just can't see paying the price for used lights right now because the price everybody wants for used lights, by the time I buy the chrome backing, the seal, and if it needs glass, I'm gonna be in the same coin as if I were to buy, uh, you know, the repop lights. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna take the guide glass out though, and I'm gonna put the guide glass into the replacement lights. So the guide glass is still in here, and then I'm gonna put the replacement lights on the H. So anyway, enough yakking. I'm gonna go ahead and get set up. We're gonna pull this out, um, bring my chop saw out, and we're gonna start cutting this metal up. And um, then I'm gonna get a game plan on my sizes and start punching out the holes, drilling everything, um, laying it out, and then I'll do the video while I'm welding it and getting it all together. And then we're gonna test fit it. And if everything's the way I want it, then next video is gonna be painting it and putting it on. So stay tuned, let me get uh, set up in the uh, tripod and let's get this video rolling. All right, got the tripod out. Didn't set you up yet because I don't know, something about it. every single time I pull this cover off this thing, and just sit back and look at it. It's like, man, this old girl came out nice. <laughs> Definitely can't help but always come out looking at it. I think I'm gonna go ahead and do something I never thought I'd ever do. I might actually put a little bit of tire shine on these tires and clean this thing up a little bit more. See how the see how that thing looks with the nice shiny tires. Yeah, and no, I'm crazy, but still, it definitely came out so good. I'm happy with this tractor. I might go ahead and uh, pull this thing out for a quick run. The muffler will clear that garage door no problem now and uh pull it on outside so that way it doesn't get all full of um metal in here from cutting that stuff up and uh yeah let's go ahead and get set up so all right so this time i promise putting you on the tripod all right my friends got safety glasses on aka sunglasses earplugs because it shit gets loud and um just took the a out for a little run a little fourth gear run down around a couple of back roads back up and Man, that thing purrs so good, runs so smooth. <laughs> it's an absolute dream to ride to ride that thing around. So, as I said, from this point forward, I'm gonna do the best for that tractor. I'm gonna start replacing some things and buying a couple new things that I probably should have replaced when I first did it, but I wasn't expecting to come out this good. So, it was one of those things, trying to refurbish some of the old parts, but now that I see everything else came across so good, it's like, yep. No, nope. I got to do the other parts now because now it's going to bother me. Hey, I also want to let everybody know I'm going to be um, laser engraving a bunch of flasks. Um, obviously, it's going to have the bourbon beer, you know, tractor and prepping logo on the back. And, um, you yeah, know, it's going to have the farm all emblems on the front and a couple other things here. And I might add, you know, do a couple different ones. But if anybody's interested in, um, you know, a little flask, either for a gift or uh, personal or anything like that, Drop a message in the comments and let me know who's interested. Um, you know, if anybody wants to shoot me like an email or something like that, they're ready. I can give you guys notification, um, you know, what I have ready. Or you can message me and let me know what you guys want. Uh, my email is sevenvalleysfarmalls at gmail.com. And if you guys, anybody has a request as far as, uh, you know, like a flask or something like that, that they like to have laser engraved uh, with somebody's name or something on it, shoot me a message. You know, I'll work out something for you guys. Um, but it's going to come standard, of course, with my logo on the back because I'm making them. <laughs> but, you know, I figure it's always nice to have. I kind of want one just to have. Um, not that I really have to walk around with booze on me, but 
never really walked around with a flask or had one with me, so eh, what the hell, you know, keep that farm all nostalgic logo look to it and, um, you know, have a little bit of bourbon in there. Why not? All right, so let's go ahead and get this thing cut up now. Obviously, I'll save these in case I need these for anything ever in the future. You never know. I might be able to use those flat pieces, but don't need them today. Let's just put these off to the side. Okay, I'm going to reposition you guys. Um, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my table out. So, yeah, let me get repositioned again. All right, so first order of business here. Let's find out what length I want my first bracket. You know, this would be a lot easier if I had a GoPro on my head, but I don't. Maybe in the future I'll get one. So it looks like about a 7-inch piece to start. This is what we're going to work with here. Alright, so unfortunately, you're going back in the stand again because I can't hold this and cut everything at the same time. So let me put you back in. Alright, that wasn't too bad. Alright, first I gotta have me a swig of my butt, of course. You know, it could be a nicer day out here today. That's beautiful. So what I'm gonna do is, once I get everything all cut up, you know, the way I want it, I'm just gonna throw out the sandblaster, sandblast the finish down, and then that will uh, make it much better for my pain. I think I've had this chop saw. If I'm not mistaken, this is a DeWalt. I think I've had this thing for probably ooh, 20 plus years. This thing's never let me down. I powder coated all this back years ago. I wasn't a big fan of the yellow, so I when I was doing all my powder coating, I stripped everything down and repowder coated everything red. So, yeah, still holding up after 20 years later. Yeah, holds up quite well. I used to do powder coat sprints, drags, wheel standers, uh, lots of four wheelers, uh, racing four wheelers, and all a lot of the uh, banshees. Um, I used to powder coat tons of rims, all kinds of stuff. I was actually doing two tone paint uh, with powder coat as well. So that was fun. That was actually kind of cool. Um, laying it out. Um, at the time when I was doing it, I think I was probably in the class of some of the first people doing two-tone powder coating. So a lot of people didn't know how to do it. It's definitely a trick. Getting the first coat on, giving it a slight bake, masking everything up, doing your second powder, and then pulling it, and then doing your final bake on the powders to get your two colors to keep it from blending, but yet give it the pattern. It used to come out really good. Um, I was always good at getting into all the crevices and all when you would have that, uh, you know, it would repel the paint from basically like Faraday and uh, you would have to give your powder coat gun. I had a Nordson gun and uh, used to go and give it a swirl with the diffuser and get into all the little crevices on frames and everything. And it was fun. Um, I would say probably the worst thing that I powder coated was the wheel standers I used to do. Um, they were heavy. If nobody's ever um, dealt with a, a wheel stander frame, the chassis itself, yeah, we used to use forklifts to actually have to lift those up to get those things strapped to racks in order to uh, powder coat them because they were they were brutal. We had a 32-foot oven that I was using, and um, yeah, it was a trick and a half, but uh, it was good times. Actually, I also did um, uh, the monster truck backdraft. I actually um, did a silver uh, powder coat on his frame for him. Um, so yeah, that was actually pretty cool. That was uh, that was a fun time. I think in the future I might get back into powder coating again. I might get everything all set up and start it, but not just yet, but in the future. Alright, let's cut this off. And you know what? I gotta 
find my chalk marker. I'm just going to use a black marker for now. I don't feel like finding my chalk stick. Alright, so I'm going to pop this puppy down to 7 inches. Actually, I might go 7 and a half quarter. It's a lot easier using your uh, soapstone. Sorry, I don't know why I was calling it chalk stick, but yeah, no soapstone. Makes it much easier to be able to see what you're doing. You got a little bit of weld. One there. That might, uh, no, I got past it. That might hold me up. Of course that is. Keep your finger off the trigger just like a gun. Don't have your finger on the trigger when you're doing this because you slip and twist that trigger and your finger's down there. You're going to have to pick a different finger to pick your nose with. All right, I'm gonna give that a second to cool down because I don't have my gloves on and that piece of metal is pretty hot. So uh, give me a second to cool that down and then we're gonna move on over and start getting the uh, layout here. All right, I found my, my soapstone I was looking for. You know, I looked everywhere, looked in the toolbox, looked in all my drawers, looked everywhere to try to find it. And uh, yeah, go figure, it was on the welding cart. I guess that's the first place I should have looked. So usually I don't put these in a point, but for this work here, I'm gonna put this in a point to make it a little bit easier for what I'm doing. There we go. So, got a nice little point. Do what I gotta do. All right, now, piece of metal's cooled down, so I'm gonna go ahead and get some measurements here and uh, get started. Yeah, I'm going to have to position you guys about a hundred times here to get this thing laid out where I want it. I'm going to use a step bit for this. Um, Alright, so I'm going to go there. It's going to be flat. So basically what we're going to do is I'm going to mount this. I'm going to cap this with some metal. Round everything off. So that way it's nice and smooth and blend it. And then we're actually going to bring the arm off of here. I'm going to cut the uh, metal and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. And we're going to fold it this way a tad. Come out. Get my angle. And then we're going to basically just make a square little platform for the foot to go on. We're going to weld that on. And then this thing will be ready to rock and roll. So it's not really hard doing uh, metal work if you've never done it before. I suggest you go ahead and buy yourself a welder. Buy yourself a little chop saw and uh, give it a whirl. It's fun to do. Once you learn how to weld and you learn how to push your welds and you get that sizzling bacon sound, as they say, um, it's, actually, uh, it's actually quite fun. I'll get my one inch mark. So I've, I've made a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff I've welded, so. All right, so there's that. I'm gonna go over and get a measurement on that uh, bolt real fast, so that way I know what size I'm gonna hit that step bit with, so I'll be right back. All right, so we're gonna go about three quarters, it's a five eighths, so I think about three quarters should be sufficient. So we're gonna come on over here. Now I'm gonna go through one process too many, um, which is fine, I'd rather do that. I'm going to go ahead and go with a smaller bit, um, do my first hole, I'm going to punch it just a hair bit bigger, and the next size up, I could tell you the sizes, but that's irrelevant right now, just a smaller one, bigger one, now I'm going to use a step bit, I'm going to open this up to three quarter, because I want to make sure I have enough room to be able to move this thing around, um, lining it up so it's not so difficult, if I have to take it on, take it off, so I'm going to go ahead and get this, this might be like a 964th, somewhere in there, and I think this might be a uh, quarter. Again, I tell you, I'm not going to say it. I still say it. That's five sixteenths. So. All right. Another thing, this is Craftsman drill press. It's a one horsepower drill press. Lord, right, I think I've had this thing for probably every bit of twenty years. So it's definitely, uh, it's never let me down. So. All right. Piece of metal right 
right there is kind of holding me up. So I'm going to go ahead and hang this off the edge and do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to punch this straight through to the other side so that way I have a guide hole for both sides. I'm going to bring this table up. There. All right, I'm not going to lock this down because obviously it doesn't really need it. And that's where we're going to start a hole. It's thin metal, so I'm not really going to use any kind of cutting oil on this. It punches right through pretty easy. But we're going to get it punched through to the other side. Now we have an extra guide hole. Step bit is only so deep. You're gonna punch through one side, then you have to punch to the other side of the step bit because of the way it's set up. You could push it all the way through, but I'm not gonna. It's funny having this garage door open. I haven't had this garage door open in years. All the years doing powder coating, I've always had this door sealed shut. Had all my stuff in front of it. But I needed room to work on the H, so it was about time to open this thing back up. Alright, so that's a good start now. As you see, it punches through really easy. It doesn't have any smoke, any blue, you know, nothing burns, because, um, like I said, it's so thin. Bits are brand new, so. Alright, so now we're going to put the step bit in here. There we go, get it centered up. Get it nice and slow. I don't know if this is my good step bit or my bad one. I have a few of them over there. Mark off where my three quarter was. Let's see if I can see this while it's hanging up here. My three quarter is this one here. Yeah, so I'll just mark that off, and that way I know once I get into that point, that's where I want to be. Easy peasy, three quarter hole. That's about one of the easiest ways to make a bigger hole like that is get a step bit. So if you never use one, I highly suggest you grab one. I've ran some Harbor Freight ones. They don't work bad, but let's just say they um, they burn up a little faster. I think this is an Irwin. So far the Irwin's been pretty good. Take your time, let the bit do the work. Don't shove your drill bit through there, and that will burn up your bit. You'll be able to feel the cut. So what happens is when you go a tear bit further, it'll actually chamfer that hole a little bit. And then, obviously, when you paint it, it will um, have a more of a rolled edge, not a straight edge. So the paint actually has some place to coat one to. So I'm going to chamfer this side. Now, I remember a lot of people don't have metal experience or know what terminology is. So just in case anybody wants to know. That's what you call a chamfered edge, when you have a slightly rolled over edge like that. So, 
just in case anybody won't know, that's what it is. Now obviously these welds here, once I get all my pieces laid out, we're gonna grind all this down, smooth all this. I'm gonna give all this a slight bevel to the edge here. We're gonna make the metal caps. I'm gonna lay those in there. When I weld it, grind it, it's gonna have a nice smooth edge to it. No sharp lines, this thing will look really good. So that's the start on getting this thing lined up. So let's go on over and see if this thing fits in there, okay? Turn you that way. That's perfect. So there's the start of my step, just like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mark the center there, and where the next hole is going to be. I'm going to go with the three quarter again. So I'm going to go ahead and square this off, transfer this line around in the middle, lay this out, and we're going to drill this again. That's my starting hole. Hang tight. I'm going to grab a grinder. I got to clean that off because I'm not going to be able to draw it from the other side with the step bit because it's going to be hitting all that weld. So hang on. Now, like I said, I could have went much, much faster if I would have kicked that thing up to like a 60. Um, it would have knocked those wells down fast. But, you know, if anything, at least it gave me a nice finished surface, nice and smooth. Um, so I don't have to go back in there and try and knock all those deep sanding scratches out. It takes a few minutes extra, but nothing major. But as you see, smooth the edges on here so it's not so sharp. So that way when we put that cap uh, on here, I'm going to go ahead and weld it in place, grind it all nice and smooth, and that'll give a nice finish. And it's an area also for water not to go into and rust out. I just think it looks better. But to each their own, if somebody decides they want to leave it open, you know, more than welcome. You can do it any way you want. That's the cool thing about when it's your tractor. You can do whatever the hell you want. Um, also, if nobody has, you know, if you're watching this video and you haven't subscribed to my channel, it's greatly appreciated uh, when you do. It's free for you guys. But obviously it helps me out greatly, helps my videos get out further, and um, you know, the more I put more videos out, the more people like to watch them, the more I'll keep making. Because, you know, there's enough teaching videos out there, a lot of people do a lot of teaching, but, you know, maybe I might do something a little different than somebody else, somebody else is going to do something a little different than me. So why not have multiple videos out there, right? And that way it'll help YouTube to keep from losing mine in the mix. Um, but if you do, like I said, greatly appreciate it. Um, you know, it means a lot. When I see new subscribers, it's always a good feeling. More or less, um, just for the fact of knowing I'm helping people more than the money, because obviously, what am I going to get a couple cents a month <laughs> if I hit a thousand? I mean, so be it. I really don't care about that part. I just enjoy doing the work. So, let's pop on through here. As you see, once you knock that weld off of there, your bits go through nice and easy again. Alright, there we go. Good to go. Got that metal out of there. And both sides drilled and chamfered and looking good. Alright, let's go back over to the A. Should be done with the drill press for now. Now I'm going to go ahead and get the measurement on the first part of the bar. So I think I'm going to make this about maybe 13. Because then the head's going to come out to about there. So now actually I'm make it a little smaller. I'm going to make this about. Let's start with a 12 inch bar. I'm going to cut it about 12, see how it looks on there when I give it the angle. And then uh, 
kind of go from there. Let's just go over here and cut a 12. So, all right, so this is the idea of the step. We're gonna put it on this way, we're gonna weld it, but I want this right here to come on a slight angle. So I'm thinking what I may do, now height-wise, I don't know where I want it yet. I can pretty much put this anywhere I want it to weld it. I could put this at the very bottom to give the step, which I may actually end up doing. Um, thinking about cutting this, breaking this, and giving this an actual bend. And I can keep that straight like that, which I think I may go ahead and do. And so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of cut this and take a little, basically like a pie out of it. And I'm going to go ahead and bring that around a tad. And then when I weld it and close it all back up, it'll give that metal like a bent look to it. Again, if you're doing this for a purpose for like show tractor or something you really want to look good, 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 you know, you take these extra steps. If it's something that you're just basically... Um, building for the farm you don't have to go through this many steps at all this is just what I want to do because it's this tractor all right so what's gonna have to happen is um, it's a little harder with this saw here cutting the wedge that I want I can actually lay it on there hold it up in the air so let me um, let me grab a couple things be right back all right, so let me explain a little bit what we're going to do here. So I put this in, and obviously I tip this up off the table just a hair. I'm going to cut down through here, pretty much all the way. That'll be my first cut, but I'm not going to cut through this back side back here. And then we're going to take a little angled sliver off the other side. So I'm going to basically put it in the saw, I'm going to tip it up, and that'll give me an area to fold the metal over, touch it, and that'll give me that angle that we're looking for. Just so that way you know what is going on here. Now let me see if I can get you in the stand without uh, making you seasick. It ain't gonna work that way. I can tell you. There we go. Yeah, that's pretty painless for the most part. All right, so let's go ahead and cut through here. All right, that's good. So, as you see. I just went ahead and sliced through like that, but I didn't go through to the other side. Now we're going to go ahead and take just a little wedge out of this side here, and then I can fold that metal over. All right, so like I said, give a little wedge. You see it cut through where I want it there. There, it's a little shy, but that's still enough for me to go ahead and knock this thing on over. I may be able to bend it. Just say it's a little warm right now. Nope, I'm gonna have to put it in the vise to bend it. All right, hang tight. All right, I decided to bring you in, show you what I'm doing in the vise, because I don't want to be that person on the video that all of a sudden jumps a step and you're like, hold on, how did he do that? Put it in the vise, and I'm basically just gonna go ahead and pull it over to there, just like that. And then that right there gives me my. Yeah, let me turn you this way. That right there gives me a slight angle that I want. Now I can go ahead and grind this and weld this up. And then the back side is just a fold, nice and clean. So let me show you kind of the idea and the thought process here. Whoop. Okay, my stand's a little crooked, sorry. So now that's gonna go on there where I want it. This is slightly turned away like I want it. And now I'm gonna make the square pad that's gonna sit on there, which will put me about here. And that'll give me plenty to be able to step up without having this too low to the ground, too close to the tire, or somewhere where it's going to bust your shin when you jump off this thing. So that's pretty much where I want it. I'm thinking about possibly cutting this back here on maybe 20 degree angle also. Kind of get both of them, just that little bit of turn. I don't know. It's like I kind of want to, I kind of don't. To me, that way, it's just a little too straight. 
If I go that way, it kind of gives me a couple angles like I want, since the tractor's got so many curves and everything to it. Um, yeah, I might do that. I'm going to cut this back side here just a tad, and that way it gives everything like a slight curve. Okay, so that's the idea that I was looking for. That makes it look a little nicer. It gives some slight curves to it. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So basically now when I weld this together, I'm just going to kind of put that on there like that. I know exactly where I want to weld. I'm not welding it near the tractor because the welding slide will burn the paint. But I know that that's where I'm going to have it. About like that. I didn't go too severe of an angle so it doesn't overshoot the metal here because if you get too much of an angle you can't overshoot but um, yeah that's good now I can measure for my square pad so it clears the tire so let's see the size pad we're going to go for here that's going to be about there I'm thinking about a four inch If I want a four by four, I'm thinking a four by two. So I go four, it gives a nice wide footprint that way. But two inch. Now I'm gonna go three. So I'm gonna go four wide, three on the depth. And that'll give me a nice pad to step on without making it too look too gaudy. And again, it's not making it look too square. So it kind of makes it more of a rectangle. So a four by three pad is what we're gonna make up next. All right, so now that right there is what I was showing you. We gotta adjust that bolt right there and then I can set this thing on a 45 because now we gotta make four pieces and a 45 to make up my four by three. So let me put this piece of metal down. Let me get what I need to get and let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so you can go by these. Um, they're pretty close relatively. Um, they're kind of crudely marked. So I'm gonna take my square and I'm gonna put it against this backside finger off the trigger, push this to about the blade, and I'm going to set my 45 to what my square says, not to what this guide says. And to me, that looks like a perfect 45. So obviously, you take your square apart and pull it out, line it up, or unless you got a uh, triangle square whatever for any anything you can check the 45 with make sure you're good don't go off all the factory guides on things just because it's nothing more frustrating when you try to put something together and you weld it and it's more of a slanted more than a uh, an actual 45 All right, so I said we're going by a four by three, so I'm gonna go ahead and start laying these out four by three. The first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and cut my first 45. So we're gonna go right there, tighten this thing up. Because again, you don't want it sliding on you. So let's cut the first one. And of course my abrasive blade is worn down just enough. It won't go all the way through. I'm gonna have to change that blade out. Uh, let me run up to the other shed and grab some blades. All right, so let's say this is not the straightest blade that I have, well, uh, cut pad that I have left, because unfortunately, uh, I went through them all and I didn't realize it. But anyway, you can see the difference, how small they get. Um, this was a DeWalt, worked good. I think this is a no name. Let's just say this one here is a little bit more wobbly. <laughs> Can't really say I'm really happy with that one, but it'll do the job. All right, so let's make the fours first. All right, so 
that would be my four. Now we're going to go to outside points, not inside points. There. So we're going to get a four, and we're going to do an inside cut. Don't know if I'm going to be able to get that to lock in place. I don't think I can. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this 45 on this side now. And then I'm going to go ahead and flip it around, do the other side. So let me go right there, lock it down. Be much easier if I probably turned this the other way, but it's all good. Now you'll see how wobbly this thing is. All right, so after looking at it a little closer, I made a few design changes. Um, I'm going to go four by six. I just think in the end, it's going to make a much better step. Because that's a four by four so far, and I was going to go four by three. And I'm thinking of that outside point, it might make it a funny look. So I think I'm going to go ahead four, and I'm going to make it six. Um, I think that's going to look a lot nicer. But as you see, like I said, just in case you haven't done 45s in metal, not much different in wood, just takes a lot more to cut through it. But I already got this laid out for six, so we're gonna go ahead and get these cut and get them all ground, get them all ready. And then uh, the second part of this video is we're gonna go ahead and weld everything up, sandblast, paint, install it on the tractor, and then that's it, we got a step. Much better than the way the last one came out. But that last one came out really bad. All right, so we're good. I'm gonna probably put these on my disc sander to uh, clean up those edges, just because the way that wheel was cutting so far off. But we are good. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, how hot are these? Okay, not brittle. Bring that over here. Bring my other two pieces over. Bring you guys over a little closer, and then kind of give you a gist of what we got going on. Basically, in the end, obviously, I got to get rid of this crap out of here. This is gonna, this will hold you out when it comes to the welding. So, I'm not really stressing it right now. But anyway, once you do the welding, that's gonna be the end game. So, we're gonna have ourselves a rectangle, and then I'm gonna go ahead and weld the expanded metal to the top. And when I do the welding around the edges, I'm gonna grind it real nice and smooth so all the expanded metal lays down. It will blend in, and then that will obviously be open for water drainage, whatever, dirt falls through, it doesn't collect, because I could do a solid metal top and then weld the expanded metal one there, but that just leaves more crevices and areas for the dirt to sit in there. I don't want that, so I opted to go this direction. Um, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and obviously I'll square this up with the square. I got my magnets that I'll go on there, and it'll hold everything nice and true. We'll do our tacks once we're nice and straight, and then we'll go ahead and do our continuous beads. Get this thing all done solid, and then I think I'm going to probably end up going... Here, let me turn this the way I'm planning on having it. So it'll be going on the tractor like this. Make sure I'm in frame here. And then this will go on... How did I have that? Yeah, I had it that way. So it's going to go on this way and then give that curvature and the angle and that'll give a nice step to step on. So if you can see that, so it'll be similar to that right there. 
uh, should look pretty good and work out really nice. So I'm going to get these things trued up on the uh, disc sander and then next we're going to go ahead and start welding. All right, so I went ahead and brought everything in, um, cleaned everything up, got the paint off of it. I just went ahead and just used that flap wheel sander. Um, this is about how it's going to look. This is mocked up so far, laying on here. And this part here, I still may go ahead and bring this up just a little bit. I might not leave it down low and flat like that, but you get the idea of how the step's going to look. So what I'll do is I'll end up getting everything squared up, tack weld it, put it back on the tractor, see if it's where I want it and how I want it, and then after that, final welding. So that concludes this portion of the video, and then stay tuned. Following up is going to be the welding portion. Thanks for watching.